been a while since I've uh, been up here spoken. I think the last time I spoke was about life struggles and what we each go through. But I failed to mention what gets us through that in one instance. And one of the most important things is faith. Hmm. And faith is such a strong, strong thing, but it can be a simple thing at the same time. And it's not always, it's never based on quantity. It's always based on the quality of what does one tell and what you do with it. So I just kind of kept thinking, I said, okay, how how will I how will I approach this? Because like I say, <coughs> I'm not a philosopher. I'm not a Rhodes Scholar. I'm, I'm very simple in my thought process, and sometimes that gets me in trouble with my wife. She says, you got to analyze things a little bit more <laughs> before you make the decisions. Mm. But I will do a lot of things based on my faith and what I think is, is right. So, faith. Starting with the letter F. Faith is fellowship with others, following the word of Christ, and taking the hand of others and leading them towards Christianity with love and understanding. Faith is an attitude of generosity, a mind filled with spirit, not necessarily a hellfire brimstone and cram it down your throat, but just the mind filled with spirit and being able to speak it in plain terms to people. Faith is individual and internal, having conviction for what you believe and being assured in your belief. Faith is timeless. You can never lose faith in God. He's always with you. And is constant. Faith is teaching love, compassion, and reverence. Faith is healing, powerful, and spiritual. Faith is lending a helping hand. So I kind of jumped the gun because I learned to lead lead into this with a little with a little storyline, and it's based on. Texas A&M University, what they call the 12th man. And a large sign at Texas A&M University football stadium says, home of the 12th man. <laughs> While each team has allowed 11 players on the field, the 12th man is the presence of 1,000 A&M students who remain standing during the game to cheer their team on. The tradition traces its roots to 1922 when the coach called a student from the stands to suit up and be ready to replace an injured player. Although he never entered the game, his willing presence on the sideline gave great encouragement to them. So you can be on the sidelines, you can be in the middle, you can be on the outside looking in, but you have to have faith surrounding everything that you do. A lot of this comes through the word and the book of Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of, of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son. He appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the world. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God, having become much superior to, his angels, superior to angels, as the name he has obtained is more excellent than the heirs. And a lot of this you will find when I get down to the end in something that growing up in the church and 
listening to it and taking it to heart and a pure and simple understanding of what faith is is the Apostles' Creed. And we'll, I'll be handing that out because I want us all to recite that at the end of, end of the uh, devotion because to me it is the most simple and natural way that people retain, keep their faith and understand and learn more from it. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge from the sword, won strength out of weakness. Of course, I'm talking about people like Gideon, Barak, Samson, David, and Samuel. Women received the dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were slain in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, deprising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hence, we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their life and intimate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus never changes. We have to become part of his growing love. And the only way to do that is through faith. And hopefully we all have that deep seed of faith with us and, and keep love in our hearts. What I'd like to do is pass these out and I'll read the cause I it out a couple of seconds. <laughs> While there is no word on the written word, can we see? word representation of the Apostles' Creed prior to 340 AD, we can be confident that the Apostles' Creed is the most accurate representation of the Christian faith in the form of a creed. The saints taught what they call the rule of faith, which is essential, the, which is essentially the Apostles' Creed. The early church had no codified, defined creeds as they have today. The Christian teachings were handed down through the preaching of the saints. The early church taught what is basically the Apostles' Creed, yet they had never written for they had never had a written form teaching it and then calling it the Apostles' Creed. I would like for you all to recite this along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in and Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only begotten Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under the spots of Pilate, was crucified, was crucified and dead, and, dead and buried. He descended, he descended into, into heaven. heaven. The third, the third day, day, he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Almighty. Yes. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sin. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. I knew Take most this, of that. study it. It is so profound. This is my core of my belief and my faith. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is that shield over there? Okay, before we eat, let's have uh, uh, another prayer, and we'll uh, go have our, our uh, casserole and whatever. <laughs> oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you again uh, with open hearts, and uh, it's just, we heard your word through Roy and Desta this evening, and as we leave this house, your house, have us walk your way, not ours. Thank you for the fellowship here at Hope's Kitchen. Thank you for all of the uh, the volunteers and the and their safety. And just thank you for the food. Thank you for the ones that help prepare the food, make it nurse our bodies and our minds, so we can go out and walk the way of your Son Jesus. We pray this through our Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.